Hydrothermal eruptions in Yellowstone National Park triggered when liquid water turns to steam in an underground cavity. When the cavity or reservoir is connected to the surface, a geyser can form to release the pressure. When the reservoir becomes closed and confined, primarily due to silica deposition, the mixture of liquid and steam creates pressure in the confined space. If the pressure in the reservoir increases to the point where it exceeds the strength of the surrounding rock, the rock ruptures and an explosion occurs. The force of the explosion creates a crater and throws rocks that can cause damage to the park and injury. Hydrothermal eruptions in Yellowstone are defined by their size, which can be estimated from the dimensions of the crater. These craters are hundreds of feet across and include Indian Pond, Turbid Lake, Duck Pond, Elliott's Crater, and Pocket Basin, among others. Mary's Bay is the largest of these and at 1.5 miles wide, it is the largest hydrothermal eruption crater in the world. However, determining the size of a crater can be difficult because some craters are submerged, some have eroded, and some have formed sequentially over time. In order to know how often eruptions of different sizes occur, the age of the crater needs to be determined. Despite the uncertainty in dating many of the eruption craters and determining their sizes, some patterns can still be extracted from the data. Small hydrothermal eruptions that create craters just a meter or less wide can occur every year or a few times per year. The appearance of the largest craters is not random, as they can be triggered by external events, such as large earthquakes or landslides that cause pressure changes in shallow hydrothermal systems. All of Yellowstone's largest craters formed several thousand years ago, in many cases shortly after the last glaciation. Any eruptions that might have occurred before that time have been erased from the geologic record by all that ice. The information gathered about the crater sizes and ages allows geologists to develop models for the frequency of small and large eruptions and the energy they release. The models underestimate the frequency of smaller events, for which there is little data, and the uncertain ages of prehistoric events add further uncertainty. The main unknown about the July 23, 2024, eruption is the size of the crater, which filled with water and grew rapidly after the eruption as its sidewalls shifted inward. Given the range of crater sizes, eruptions of this size are likely to occur once every decade to a few decades on average. Larger events forming craters about an acre in size, are likely to occur once every few hundred years, and the largest events larger than 10 acres are likely to occur once every few thousand years. Hydrothermal eruptions the size of the one at Porkshop Geyser in 1989 are likely to occur every few years. Smaller events, such as the April 15, 2024, Porcelain Terrace eruption at Norris Geyser Basin are likely to occur annually at Yellowstone. They are most likely to occur at night or during the winter months when few people are present or in remote areas that are rarely visited. Additional data on the timing and location of small hydrothermal eruptions can be aided by monitoring data. Using these data in conjunction with knowledge of previous eruptions and models that measure the amount of energy they release can provide an important way to better understand how frequently eruptions occur, the danger they pose to visitors, and whether there might be early warning signals that could be used to warn of these dangerous events.